Hello everyone, my name is Shraddha Tone. I am assistant professor in computer engineering department in AIS SMS IOIT. In this series, we will discuss about the IPv6 addressing. In last lecture, we have seen various IPv4 addressing. So, the problem we IPv4 addressing we will see first all the solutions that we know for example classless addressing DHCP NAT in all these address depletion is still a long term problem for the internet so this and other problem in IP protocol such as lack of accommodation for real time audio and video transmission encryption and authentication of data for some applications have been the motivations for IPv6 addressing. So now we will see what are the addressing techniques of IPv6. First of all, we will see the structure of IPv6 address. Basically, IPv6 address consists of 16 bytes. It is a 128 bit long. It notation in a hexadecimal colon. In IPv4, we have seen that IPv4 addresses noted in a dotted decimal or binary form. So, this IPv6 address we can notate in a hexadecimal colon. To make address more readable, IPv6 specifies hexadecimal colon notations. In this notation, 128 bit is divided into 8 sections in each 2 bytes in length. 2 bytes in hexadecimal notations require 4 hexadecimal digits. Therefore, the address consists of 32 hexadecimal digits with every 4 digits separated by a colon which is shown in this figure. So, this is the IPv6 addresses which is separated by a colon. We will see the abbreviation. IP address in hexadecimal form is very long. Many of the digits are zeros. So, in this case, we can abbreviate the address, the leading zeros of sections is 4 digits between 2 colons can be omitted. Only the leading zeros can be dropped, not the trailing zeros, which is shown in this figure. Using this form of abbreviations, it is possible if there are consecutive sections consisting of zeros only. So, we can remove the zeros all together and replace them with a double semicolon. But note that this type of abbreviation is allowed only once per address. If there are two runs of zero sections, so only one of them can be abbreviated. And re-expansions of this abbreviated address is also very simple. Just align the abbreviated portion and insert zero to get the original expanded address. Next is address space. So IPv6 has much larger address space. When uh, 2 raised to power 128 addresses are available. The designers of IPv6 divided this address into several categories. A few left most bits which we call it as a type prefix in that each address define its category. The type prefix is variable in length but it is designed such that no code is identical to the first part of any other code. So in this way, there is no ambiguity. When an address is given, the type prefix can easily be determined. So this table shows the type prefix for IPv6 addresses. So these are the type prefixes. And the third column shows the fraction of each type of addresses relative to the whole address space. Next is the different types of addresses. There are various types of addresses we can have. That is, first one is unicast address. What is meant by unicast address? The unicast address define a single computer. The packet sent to the unicast address must be delivered to that only specific computer. So IPv6 defines two types of unicast address here. One is geographically based 
and second one is the provider based so this diagram shows the provider based unicast address so we will see the detail of this provider based unicast address first field is type identifier which is shown in this black portion this field is of 3 bit which define the address as a provider base address next is provide registry identifier next is registry identifier this 5 bit field indicates the agency that has registered the addresses currently three register centers have been defined first one is INTERNIC the code is 11000 this is the center of North America second one is RIPNIC code is 01000 this is the center code for European registration and third one is APNIC that is 10100 this is the code for Asian and specific countries now next field is provider identifier the variable length field identifies the provider for the internet internet access we can uh, such as for example isp this is the 16 bit length which is recommended for this field next one is subscriber identifier when an organization subscribes to the internet through a provider it is assigned a subscriber identification code so a 24 bit length is recommended for this field next one is subnet identifier each subscriber can have many different subnetworks and each subnetwork can have an identifier the subnet identifier defines a specific subnetwork under the territory of subscribers so this field is of 32 bit length next one is node identifier the last field defines the identity of the node connected to the subnet a length of 48 bit is recommended for this field to make it compatible with our 48 bit link which we can call it as a physical address which is used by the ethernet so this is all about the unicast address and this slide shows the details about each and every field related to unicast address next is multicast address this multicast address are used to define a group of posts instead of just one. A packet sent to a multicast address must be delivered to each number of the groups, which is shown in the figure. The second field is a flag field that defines the group addresses as either permanent or transient. A permanent group address is defined by the internet authorities and can be accessed at all the times. And the transient group addresses on the other hand is used only temporarily is for example we can say that system engaged in a teleconference can use transient group addresses the third field defines the scope of the group addresses so there are many different scopes that have been defined this is related to multicast addresses next one is any cast address so IPv6 defines any cast address which is like multicast address which is same as multicast address. It also defines a group of nodes. The packet which is designed for an anycast address is delivered to only one of the members of any cast group that is the nearest one. One possible use of this address is to assign address to all the routers of an ISP that covers a large logical area in the internet the router outside the isp deliver that packet to the particular destination for the isp to the nearest isp router and remember that no block is assigned for any cast addresses next address type is reserve address so this another category of reserve addresses this address starts with the eight zeros a few subcategories are defined in this category which is shown in this figure. An unspecified address is used when host does not know its own address and sends an inquiry to find its address. Next is a loopback address. This loopback address is used by a host 
to test itself without going into the inter network next is a compatible address this compatible address is used during the transition from ipv4 to ipv6 means it is used when a computer using ipv6 wants to send a message to another computer using ipv6 but the message needs to pass to the part of the network that still operates in ipv4 last one is mapped address that this address used during the transition means it is used when a computer that has migrated to ipv6 wants to send a packet to computer still using ipv4 this is related to reserve address and last address is local address these addresses are used when organization wants to use ipv6 protocol without being connected to the global internet in other word they provide addressing for private network nobody outside the organization can send message to the node using these addresses so two types of addresses are defined for this purpose a link local address and site local address link local address is used in an isolated subnet and site local address is used in isolated site with several subnet which shown in this figure so this is all about ipv6 addresses thank you